Light up your shrines, be prepared to kneel, and get your prayers ready, because it's time we talk about the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. God Usopp himself. <laughs> and I'm gonna say it, Usopp's sexy, not his pre-time skip self, because that is just a sweet little man. No, no, I'm talking about his time skip self. You can deny it, but this guy got so jacked, he's probably got more muscle than Sanji. And with the suspenders no shirt look, Usopp genuinely looks like he's dressed for a sexy fireman poster. The day he lets his hair down is the day One Piece fans everywhere will fall to their knees at the mighty god Usopp's shining beauty. God Usopp. Usopp. God. Okay. Usopp. Sweet, sweet Usopp. Sex appeal aside, Usopp sure gets a lot of shit, doesn't he? For all the jokes he gets about how he's a god, a lot of people really don't like him. Which is strange, considering Usopp is honestly the most inoffensive character on the Straw Hats. Uh, design issues aside. That or others just forget about him, which is sad. And I'll be honest, the complaints about Usopp simply do not make sense. He gets called useless, weak, pathetic, annoying, sad, like Damn, who are you? Judge Vinsmoke? It's quite funny to me that Usopp gets called useless when everything he's asked to do or needs to do, he gets done. He managed to hold off Kudo's pirates until Luffy arrived. He managed to take out Mr. Four and Miss Merry Christmas. He successfully got Luffy and Sanji out of the bull trial and got Sanji onto an L ship to take it down. He got the keys to Robin in Annie's lobby. He took out Perona because no one else had the ability to be able to. He easily did his share of fighting on Fishman Island. He got everyone to safety in Punk Hazard through the intercon system while also getting Caesar's betrayed crew to side with him. He stopped Sugar twice and got thousands of followers in Dress Rosa. He took out both Page One and Ulti with Nami and figured out Kaido's intercon system to get Otama's message across to everyone they used her devil fruit on. And this isn't even all his fates. All in all, Usopp has proved his worth time and time again. I think Tons of people just forget about it. Sure, Usopp isn't flashy, he's no fire-footed cook, muscle-brained swordsman, or rubber pirate captain, but he's a strong character in his own right. The fact we watched him beat Perona, an opponent literally only he could defeat and no one else on the crew could, and he still gets his abilities as a character and a pirate dragged through the dirt, is baffling to me. The most interesting thing about him is, the things he gets criticised for, i.e. being useless or weak, are exactly the things he internalises he is. His so-called place on the crew has been explored and answered already, and has gone in depth about how he feels and the insecurities he faces. But I will be getting into that later, because we need to actually scratch the surface of Usopp before digging into the heart of this beautiful, wonderful man. But before that, it's sponsor time. This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treats and Sakura Ko. I've sponsored the February box for these guys and let me tell you, it slapped. If you don't know what they are, Tokyo Treats is a monthly pop Japanese snack box where you will get up to 20 of the latest, most exclusive, limited edition and seasonal flavoured Japanese snacks. This time I have the March box and I did it away from my law mouse pad because he was a little distracting last time. As you can see, the boxes are pretty big and this time around I got melon Kit Kats. I was convinced Tokyo Treats were playing a prank on me because I pulled these out and went that's me. They were delicious, and definitely now my favourite flavour of Kit Kat. I ate all of them in probably two days. My other favourite snack was the bubble candy, which made me incapable of talking because it foamed up in my mouth so much. In a good way. It was a shocking yet tasty experience. And next we have Sakura Ko, who are a monthly authentic Japanese snack subscription box. Sakura Ko supports local Japanese snack makers with each box they send out. And they all come with 20 traditional, authentic and artesian Japanese snacks, including Japanese teas and a special Japanese tableware. The tableware this time around was a kanji side dish and it is extremely well made and wonderfully packed. My favourite snacks from this box were the Hitoike Cafe Cream Cakes, due to the creaminess, and the Salted Caramel Nut Sable. And can't forget the delicious Kyoto Sencha Tea. You can learn more about the snacks you eat as well as allergen information from the booklets you receive, so it's tasty and safe for everyone. These boxes are well packaged and are packed with a lot of love and I'm enjoying every single one I get. If you're a snack lover yourself, 
yourself, I highly encourage you to try these monthly snack boxes and get your own little slice of the sweet side of Japan all from the comfort of your own home. If you want to give it a try, don't forget to use my code to get $5 off your first box. Be sure to check the links below. And thank you so much Tokyo Treat and Sakura Ko for sponsoring this video. And it's back to the sexy sniper. My feelings on Usopp? If you can't tell, I like him. I think he gets a lot of flack for absolutely no reason. There are many moments where Usopp honestly feels like the heart of the crew. While being a very panicky person, he's got a lot of emotional intelligence. Hell, one of the reasons Water 7 was so shocking is because he stood up to Luffy. When we've known Usopp as an incredibly soft, non-confrontational guy before this. But from Kudo's threat to the lives of Kaya and his village, all the way to needing to save Luffy and Law from Sugar, we've seen Usopp Usopp's will of determination and passion that exists within him and all of the Straw Hats. But one of the things he gets criticised a lot for, and something that's literally in his name, is the fact he's a liar. The man's pretty obvious Pinocchio influence doesn't really go unnoticed by the majority. Usopp was even introduced to us as a liar, telling stories to Kaya while she was sick in her room, and constantly yelling that pirates were coming to his village. He's the boy who cried wolf if the boy in that fable actually took responsibility for his lies, which is exactly what Usopp does. Yet, a lying character isn't exactly one most would immediately jump on to love or care about, since the act of lying in itself isn't an honourable or cool one. However, what's extremely important to note with Usopp's character is he isn't lying maliciously. Usopp is no Doflamingo, with Doffy using his sweet words and gaslighting tactics to place himself on a pedestal of glory and and power. In fact, this is possibly why Oda had Doflamingo be so scared of Usopp in Dress Rosa. To the point Usopp got a 500 million berry bounty placed on his head. In terms of their lies, Usopp and Doffy are on different sides of the same coin, showing Doffy as the manipulative bitch he is with how malicious his lies were. Usopp's lies, however, are not woven from devious dishonesty, nor with the aim to ruin and take over the lives of others. Usopp lies for harmless fantasy for his safety, and most importantly, for himself. We see it with Kaya. He doesn't tell these fake stories to try and make himself look better in front of her, but to cheer her up. With his own village, he lies every morning due to his dad not only being a pirate, but as a reminder for them that it's another peaceful morning. The violence of the Kuro pirates aside, this is why he was so desperate to keep them away from the village. So everyone living there felt safe and happy while continuing to think of Uso Usopp as the harmless liar that he is. I also think it's worth adding that lying successfully, especially in battle, does take a lot of intelligence, especially in terms of keeping up a bluff. We even watch Zoro try to do this in Skypiea, and he fails miserably because this dope can't hold a bluff to save his life. <laughs> Focusing back on Kaya, what he tells her are just as much lies as they are grand stories. She even knows he's not telling the truth, and I'm sure he doesn't think her stupid enough to believe them. But they're a fun fantasy they can indulge in together. First and foremost, Usopp is a storyteller. And we've seen the Straw Hats, especially Luffy, enjoy Usopp's stories time and time again. If Luffy finds a musician to be important and essential to his pirate crew, there's no doubt Luffy Luffy also finds a fabulous to be just as important. And Usopp's wild imagination is probably why the two of them get along as well as they do. However, while Brook is a musician first and a swordsman second, Usopp is instead a sniper first and a storyteller second. Usopp's stories and lies are just an added perk to his character, which can only mean there is more to them than meets the eye. And surprisingly, or not surprisingly depending on if you pick this out or not, Usopp's lies are actually extremely important to who he is and how he motivates himself. Since, overall, 
Usopp lies because those lies are who he wants to be. Let's dissect him a little more before we get into that. As previously brought up, Usopp's dad is a pirate. I know there's a lot of jokes made about this. About how his dad is a deadbeat and left a little too long to grab the milk and yada yada. But the fact we need to keep in mind about Usopp's dad is that he admires him. His mother held no ill will toward Yasop. And neither does Usopp. Usopp even thinks his dad is an amazing man for chasing his passions. And looks up to his dad as a role model due to him living a dangerous life as a pirate on the seas. Who his dad is, is a core part of Usopp's character. Because his cowardly nature is actively being pushed down due to the will to be a man as brave as his father. I think that's a beautiful thing. I guess it's weird for a son to like their dad when Yasop essentially abandoned the family. But Usopp doesn't see it as that. This is is pirate times, an era of thousands of people jumping to the seas to pursue a grander goal. And I personally don't see the difference between someone leaving their family to join the marines and someone leaving their family to join a pirate crew. In the end, however I or you feel about it doesn't matter, because it's how Usopp feels that matters the most. Usopp has always wanted to become a pirate due to his dad, has always wanted to take on the ocean and become a brave warrior of the sea. And without Yasuo, being who he is, there's no doubt Usopp would have become the full-fledged coward he kind of naturally is. So already there's a sense he's living in his dad's shadow, being the son of a man from the Red Hair Pirates. Except instead of seeing it as a negative thing, Usopp has turned that into admiration and motivation to live the exciting life he wants to live. Usopp seems especially hell-bent on trying to be a man he wants to be, not because of an outside pressure, nor because it's something he thinks he needs to be, but because it's something he wants. Every man on the crew has a different idea of what manliness is, which is personally something endearing about each male straw hat. And Usopp is still trying to find his own. This is why he is especially keen to listen and learn from others. Why he attaches himself to someone like Frankie, even after starting on bad terms. And why he seems to fumble back and forth on whether to hide or to fight. Inside Usopp are two wolves, a man, and a coward. And sometimes they kiss. It's for this reason Usopp meets a specific character very early on. A certain man he can look up to who is extremely important in shaping who Usopp is and the decisions he makes in future arcs. This man being Broggy, one of the giants from Elbaf that the Straw Hats meet in Little Garden. In fact, with Broggy, we discover the first instance of Usopp's lies becoming a reality. This lie being the giant goldfish whose poops were so big they were mistaken as islands. <laughs> Immediately there is a connection between Usopp and Broggy or just the giants overall, because this grand man has experienced the even grander fantasies that Usopp has told tales of. Though it's not just the stories of Broggy's adventures that fascinate Usopp, but the way Broggy and the Elbaf giants carry themselves overall. Usopp is extremely captivated by the kind of pride Broggy holds in his life and being, not just as a man, but as a warrior. As we know, Usopp's dream is to become a brave warrior of the sea. So it's no wonder that he becomes enamored with the giants of Elbaf and finds a so-called master to look up to through Broggy. While his dad was a point of motivation in pushing Usopp to the sea, Broggy is the anchor point in building Usopp's character. Because of Broggy, Usopp vows to become a man who is proud of how he lives, and becomes more daring and risk-taking after meeting the giants. Even if Usopp is still a coward at heart, he pushes himself to be more than that and manages to hold his own in multiple battles throughout the Grand Line. He's a very failing upwards type of character, similar to Buggy but with a lot more intent on how he goes about things. For example, while he didn't mean to become a god in the eyes of his Dressrosa followers, he still had the aim to make them band together. And before this, even if it was by unconventional means, he managed to take out Sugar and free the people of Dressrosa, which was his objective all along. He just happened to 
achieve it in an unusual and comedic way. As said previously in the video, Usopp will always get the job done, even if he has to Bugs Bunny his way through it. But if we look at one of the main arcs that grows and matures Usopp into the current character he is, along with utilizing his lies and showcasing the importance of them, we get a much deeper understanding of Usopp as a whole. This arc, of course, being Water 7. Water 7 did a lot, from Robin's backstory, to Frankie's backstory, to the development of Luffy as a captain. There are so many different aspects in this single arc that multiple people can point to and say is their favourite. But one aspect that arguably pulls the most heartstrings is the crumbling state of the going Merry. It's shown very clearly throughout the entire series that Usopp and the Merry share a very deep and profound connection, with it not only being gifted from Kaya, but also promising a new dawn with Usopp's dream of becoming a pirate finally turning into reality. The takeaway here is that Usopp's starting point with the Straw Hats was also with Merry, and together they sailed the ocean that held the adventure Usopp desired. Usopp was also the only one seen to be fixing the Merry, or modifying it whenever needed, and loved the Merry to the point that she began talking back to him. A spirit of love and joy had grown within this ship purely because of the Straw Hats, and largely due to Usopp's care for it. But more than just a physical connection, Usopp and Mary shared a more metaphorical one, the Mary being an embodiment of Usopp's fears and anxieties by being part of the Straw Hats. This fear in question was Usopp feeling useless and easily replaceable, hence why scrapping the Mary hit a very deep sore spot for him. Usopp knows more than anyone that he isn't the strongest member on the crew, possibly even believes he is the weakest. He's no monster, not in the way Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji are, and this fact is painfully clear to him. It's why Luffy's words cut particularly deep, Luffy telling Usopp that if he doesn't like it, he can just leave. It was said out of aggression on Luffy's part, but imagine the damage that would have been done on Usopp's psyche. Luffy is essentially saying that they don't need Usopp anyway, that nothing would be lost if Usopp up and left the Straw Hats for not following Luffy's orders. It's honestly quite meta in its conception, because plenty of people see Usopp's character in that way. It feels like Oda's beating us over the head with how the crew cares deeply about Usopp, and how the Straw Hats wouldn't be the same without him. But this detail seems to be lost to a lot of fans. Another thing to note is how Sanji was the one to kick some sense into Luffy, and how Sanji was mainly the one to uplift Usopp best he could throughout Water 7. Usopp's feeling of uselessness doesn't go unnoticed by Sanji, probably because they feel very similar in that regard. The two of them both want to be useful for the crew, and both hold insecurities that their best isn't enough. And Sanji knew exactly how painful Luffy's words were the second he spat them out. If you want more of a deep dive regarding Sanji's own insecurities, I have a lovely little Sanji video about that. And it's honestly very telling that Usopp and Sanji seem to be the only two characters who have a soundtrack where both their themes are mixed together. Toa, you were a real one for that one. Sanji is also the one who delivers a line that is infamous within the One Piece community. And for good reason. This line being, I'll do what you can't do, and you do what I can't do. We'll touch more on this line later. Going back to the Mary, Usopp becomes unreasonable with Luffy's decision simply because he sees it as Luffy throwing a useless member of the crew away. This is obviously not how Luffy intended for it to come off, but he sure didn't reassure Usopp in any way with the sudden fight the two had. Usopp then picks an actual fight with Luffy because he wants to prove his worth. He knows he's a coward and physically weak, but his determination to show his worth, in the same way he's trying to show Mary also still has worth, has him making reckless decisions. And Luffy yelling, you know you can't beat me, only makes this worse. Because to Usopp, it confirms everything he already thinks of himself. He's weak, he's replaceable, and he's only a hindrance to the crew. This fight was painful, because we're watching Usopp desperately struggle to be something he's not for the sake of his own worth. He'd already lost the money for the Mary, and he'd then been told the Mary was being scrapped. And now, with Luffy yelling such a thing, 
he's truly hit rock bottom. Usopp is not a physical fighter. He's a gadgets maker and a strategist more than anything, but he pushed aside his strengths to focus on his weaknesses. Because that's all he can focus on. It's hard to be a normal person in a crew of monsters. And Usopp probably embodies the regular viewer more than any of us want to admit. As much as many of us want to be as strong, as powerful, and as wild as the monster trio of the Straw Hats, we're only able to be the regular people we exist as. But that isn't an insult, and it's certainly not a diss at Usopp or anyone else watching. Because while we don't hold the strength a member of the Monster Trio possesses, everyone has their own unique skills and talents that make them valuable and lovable. This is a concept Usopp can't seem to grasp, and this is why Sanji's words are so important. <laughs> It's with his infamous line that Sanji acknowledges Usopp has strengths and that he is significant. Usopp doesn't need to be physically strong. He doesn't need to fight the big bads in the way the Monster Trio does because he contributes in other ways. After all, from the second Usopp became the sniper, we saw he held infinite potential. Usopp surprised even himself from his perfect shot with the cannon. He was shocked to discover he actually defeated a fishman. He saved Luffy and the others from being killed by Mr. Three on Little Garden. And the list goes on and on. Usopp has no confidence. He belittles himself constantly, yet he is extremely capable. This is why Perona's ghost worked on everyone but him, giving us the iconic scene where Usopp essentially says, I'm already depressed. <laughs> The main difference between Usopp and Sanji is Sanji has confidence in his abilities, while Usopp doesn't, and he continues to struggle to focus on his strengths instead of his weaknesses. This is especially prominent in Water 7, where Usopp has hit a low point of being near incapable of seeing things in a glass half full way, and this is where Soga King comes into the mix. For all the jokes Soga King has about him, and how Luffy and Chopper both seem to be unable to legitimately tell if it's really Usopp under that mask, Soga King plays a vital role in Usopp's confidence. Because at this point, Usopp doesn't want to be himself, and Soga King provides the alter ego he needs to act as foolhardy and confident as he wants to be. The story goes that Soga King is the king of snipers, hailing from a land of snipers, and you don't need to be a genius to figure out what he's doing here. The Soga King mask serves the same purpose as an online persona. For example, I certainly have a lot more courage online than I do in real life, and I'm sure it's the same for many of you watching. But instead of using this new persona to start arguments on Twitter, or send crude shit posts, or write really bad songs. That's what the mask is! Usopp uses Soga King to be the hero he wants to be. This loops around to what I was saying previously about how Usopp tells lies for himself. Because they're another factor that motivates him to be the warrior he's dreamt of being. And we watch Soga King become a reality, as Usopp takes his rightful title as the King of Snipers not just in Water 7, with his insane accuracy getting the keys successfully to Robin, but with his second win against Sugar. Usopp even unlocked Haki from the focus needed to achieve such a shot, and it's nothing but satisfying to see his inner Soga King blooming into a natural part of who Usopp is. <laughs> The ending of Water 7 is why Usopp no longer needs the mask to reach his true potential, with the Soga King mask even cracking throughout the arc. A possible symbol to show us Usopp's alter ego is slowly being broken through with the confidence he gains thanks to his crewmates. Soga King is an amazing element implemented in Water 7, and one I hadn't thought too much about until really sitting down to consider it. After all, Chopper and Luffy aside, 
Even the other straw hats go along with Usopp's lie, understanding the importance this has to him. They only use Usopp's name directly when wanting to address the man behind the mask. Sanji once again connecting with Usopp when doing just this. And even saying how amazing and cool the straw hat sniper is when Usopp shoots the keys across the Eni's lobby bridge. <laughs> By the final scenes, Usopp has fully torn away from his Soga King persona and reveals himself to Luffy, encouraging Luffy to keep fighting because of his newfound strength, a strength that has grown from the reassurance his crew have given him. It only makes the most sense for Usopp to be the one to push Luffy to keep his hope here, because Luffy was still upset at the fallout they'd had. Luffy is someone who can't put his all into something unless he truly feels that way, and we can see Luffy seems to feel genuinely tired and wavering during his fight with Luchi. But, lo and behold, Usopp appears to reassure him, successfully filling the hole in Luffy's heart that their fight had left behind. And while not healing Luffy physically, the mental strength and morale Luffy gets back upon seeing Usopp speaks for itself. The final scene to note within Water 7 is the apology scene, the last band-aid that needed to be slapped down and cemented to leave us with a satisfying ending. Zoro and Sanji were both harsh in their opinions of how Usopp needed to make up for his leaving, but between their ideas, it makes perfect sense. Especially with how we see Usopp's lying to himself on how he'll be accepted back into the crew. Usopp covers his insecurities, his guilt, and his shame with the lies he tells. It's clear Usopp feels a lot of remorse with how he treated Luffy, with how he stressed out the crew, and with how, at the time, he had come off as unreasonable. There's a strong possibility that Usopp's negative mindset had him thinking they wouldn't accept his apology. So what could he do instead? Fame confidence and walk right back to the Straw Hats, hoping things would be mended without the fear of rejection. But thanks to Zoro's stubbornness, and Sanji's agreement of Zoro's stubbornness, Usopp's true feelings burst out. He doesn't just cry but shouts his apologies, admitting he was a fool for the things he said and was stupid for the things he did. <laughs> It was a real tough love sort of moment, and it needed to be done to allow Luffy and the others to accept Usopp back wholly and truly. I think it is really important to have Usopp as a member of the crew, because in the end, Usopp grounds the Straw Hats as the family they are. And that's the most important thing to remember here, that the Straw Hats are a family, not a traditional pirate crew, nor do they follow the blueprints of a traditional shonen. These characters are not chosen by how useful they are to Luffy, nor by how strong they are within the Straw Hats. Usopp probably receives the shit that he does because he gets put in imaginary power scaling competitions with the stronger members of the crew. And by doing that, you lose a core part of why Usopp is actually a straw hat, and what One Piece is really about. If you want the male fantasy who can slice through mountains and stand there and look cool, then Zoro is your guy. But Usopp is not designed to be that. He's designed to be your average Andy, the guy who is going against all odds to face his fears in the pursuit of his dreams. And he's there to connect with us. I don't know about you, but I'm no Zoro, I'm no Sanji, and I'm certainly no Luffy. I can only dream to be these kinds of guys with that kind of strength in another reality. And that's okay, because in the end, there is a straw hat I can aspire to actually be like. A character who faces his fears because he's making an effort to be someone he wants to be. Who is making their delusions of grandeur a reality through sheer force of will. And that's Usopp. Usopp is the underdog, and he's completely misunderstood in who he is. Yes, he's called a coward, and it's probably in his nature to be a coward, but he is actively facing his fears every day to fight against that part of himself. 
Usopp is terrified of the unknown. The large scale of the ocean and the strength it promises is anxiety inducing in itself for Usopp. Yet he is standing face to face with his greatest fears to better himself and become a brave warrior of the sea. Even back in his home village we saw this part of him, as Usopp faced the Black Cat Pirates with all of his ability at the time. And this is exactly what Luffy saw. Luffy saw someone with the will to be better, with the determination to protect his friends, and with the unending promise of becoming someone amazing. And Usopp continued to prove himself, while also becoming an irreplaceable member of the Straw Hats. I don't know about you, but I cannot call a man who willingly sails the Grand Line and the New World a coward. And I think a lot of people are unable to see past the gag of Usopp being spineless when, in reality, the biggest lie Usopp's telling is that he's a coward. Because, from everything we've seen, it's not at all the truth. And I will be rooting for Usopp till the day I die. And with that, Thanks for watching. I truly believe Usopp deserves more love and I'm so glad Oda does what he does with Usopp because Usopp's development of bravery and strength is something I love to watch. I know we're all waiting for the eventual Elbaf arc to see Usopp shine once more and it's amazing to me that Elbaf is quite literally fable backwards because who else to connect to the land of fable than the one character who tells nothing but fables. Just pure genius in writing that I cannot wait to see come to fruition. As always, let me know what you think. I know the Usopp video was very heavily anticipated by a lot of you, so I hope I've done him justice. I already know I missed a bit about Usopp here and there, but hopefully the main points were coherent enough. Just a quick reminder that I do have a Patreon, and if you would like to support me there, I'd really, really, really appreciate it. However, I know not everyone can support me in that way, and watching and sharing these videos does more than you can imagine for me. If there's anything you'd like to see me cover, one piece or otherwise, please let me know. And I'll see you in whatever I make next. See ya!